That's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. In a relatively surprising development, Spain's traditional conservative party, the People's Party, suffered a crushing defeat at the polls last Sunday, securing only 66 seats down from the 137 they had in 2016 election. Meanwhile, Spain's center-left Socialist Party, PSO, increased its representation in parliament to 123 seats, up from 84 they had before. It is now expected that Pedro Sanchez, the leader of PSO, will form a minority government. Meanwhile, the far-right wing party, Vox, also made inroads, winning representation in parliament for the first time um, when it gained 10% of the vote and 24 seats. Joining me now to discuss the results is Sebastian Faber. Sebastian is a professor of Hispanic studies at Oberlin College and author of the book, Memory Battles of the Spanish Civil War. Welcome back, Sebastian. My pleasure. So, Sebastian, a big victory for Poso last night, uh, in spite of the fact that over the last few years, center-left governments have been losing ground in Europe, but that changed last night in Spain. What happened? Well, um, the left in Spain, and I think in the rest of Europe, breathed a sigh of relief last night, because for a while it looked like Spain might see the victory of three right-wing parties um, who were predicted by some polls to be able to win a majority in the parliament and form a right-wing government, including that new radical right party you just mentioned, Vox. And that would have meant walking back decades worth of progressive achievements from women's rights to LGBTQ rights to animal rights, um, and um, including a kind of scaling back of Spain's territorial um, division into re um, autonomous regions. So the big side relief that happened last night was because these three right-wing parties failed to win the parliament majority, in large part because of the Partido Popular, the PP you just mentioned, which is traditionally the center-right, the biggest center-right party, um, had a crushing defeat and lost a whole big chunk of its parliamentary representation. Uh, instead, the big winner last night was the Socialist Party, um, which is currently has been governing the country um, by itself with the parliamentary minority since last summer. And in a way, the voters confirmed that this is the way they want the country to go. Um, they, they gave um, Pedro Sanchez, the current prime minister, more than a passing grade. They gave him a very good grade. And the Socialist Party is coming out of these elections stronger than it was before. That said, the Socialist Party still does not have by itself, a majority of seats in government. It has more than it had, but still no, no majority. So to pass any legislation, they will need the support of any other parties in the government, in, in the parliament. Um, whether they will do that by forming a formal coalition with other parties on the left, such as Unidas Podemos, which is um, a, a, a relatively new party to the left of the socialists, whether they'll form those coalitions is up for question. Currently, the signals uh, since last night seem to be that socialists are going to try to go it alone and um, rely on opportunistic or ad hoc agreements with parties in the parliament. Um, but I think all that remains to be seen. Everybody um, who, uh, everybody in the left in Spain is saying they're taking things very slowly, they're taking their time, uh, sit down and talk through things. And the reason they're doing that, in part, is because within less than a month, the Spaniards are going back to the polls again, this time around to vote for regional, uh, municipal, and the European Parliament. And many parties um, will tread very carefully in the coming weeks uh, with an eye to these other elections. Nobody will want to be caught making uh, concessions or um, partnering up with parties that may disenchant their own base. So everybody will be very careful, quite secretive as they figure out what's the next step. People do agree though that what is in Spain's best interest at this point is a stable government that can pass legislation, including budgets, and that might be able to make some progress in solving this incredible conundrum that has had the country paralyzed and polarized for the last 
two years, which is what to do with Catalonia, which two years ago tried to become independent um, through referendum and since then has been um, caught in, 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 a, in a stalemate with Madrid. Explain further, uh, Sebastian, how Catalonian independence played out in this election. Well, the three parties on the right decided to take an extreme hard line uh, in the campaign leading up to these elections last Sunday uh, on Catalonia. So they called um, any of the Catalan politicians who are in favor of independence or even of self-determination, they called those um, golpistas, which is perpetrators of a coup. So in their mind, the referendum that happened two years ago was in fact a coup comparable to the coup in 36 that unleashed the Spanish Civil War. And they called these people basically traitors to the fatherland, traitors to the homeland. They took an extreme hard line. Um, and in a way, the voters on Sunday indicated that they don't think that is a viable line to take. Um, one way to interpret um, Sunday's results is to say the Spanish electorate understands that whatever their position might be on Catalonia, the only way forward is dialogue. Madrid has to sit down with Barcelona and talk through things and see what solutions might be available that could uh, please all parties. Rather than this hard, confrontative um, crackdown line that even on the right included a proposal to make any party that's in favor of Catalan independence illegal in Spain, so basically exclu excluding them from the political game altogether. Yes. Uh, so in a way, the, the Spanish electorate has said, that's not the line we think makes sense. That's not the approach we think Spain should take, because in the end, we have to find a way to all live together. Hmm. Now, now, explain further how this uh, uh, Catalonian independence played out in the right-wing parties, because as uh, you stated earlier, uh, the Popular Party, uh, the People's Party, had lost quite a bit of seats. It's uh, settled at 66 uh, seats. So obviously this was a, a fracturing issue uh, in the right as well. It was. Um, just as a side note, um, it, Spain's electoral system um, tends to exaggerate differences. So the PP's loss and the socialists win in percentages was, was a little bit less than those seats seem to indicate. That said, it is really telling that those parties that the three right-wing parties, including the PP that took this very hard line on Spain's territorial question, lost even more seats than they had already been losing in the past couple of years, precisely in those regions who have a big stake in, um, in regional autonomy, namely Catalonia and the Basque country. In Catalonia, I believe the PP has been reduced to a single seat in the national parliament in Madrid. And in Basque country, it has disappeared from the map altogether. And that is really telling. So those peripheral regions that have a, a strongly believe in their right to self-government have basically told the PP, look, as long as you take this hard line, we're not going to vote for you anymore. Now, PASO has indicated that uh, they are willing to actually govern, uh, even though they have a minority status as a government. Um, and the option of forming a coalition with Podemos is uh, out there, uh, but they haven't committed to that. Um, so give us a little bit here in terms of where does this leave Podemos? Um, and also in terms of how did they do in the election? And uh, they seem to be in favor of form forming a coalition with PASO. Uh, where does this leave Podemos? Podemos has had a really hard couple of years, uh, marked by uh, intense internal strife, um, publicly displayed um, fights among the leadership, leading even to the breakaway of basically Pablo Iglesias as number two in Rejon, who went to, to found his own party um, not too long ago. Um, so Podemos had had a really hard time. Given that, it didn't do so badly. Um, the lowest it polled at one point was around 12%. They ended up winning about 14% which is um, indic indic indicative of, of, of a recovery of some sort. That said, they did lose 29 of their 71 seats uh, on Sunday, which is not a good result. And Pablo Iglesias admitted that very uh, frankly, he said, we are not happy with this result. In the campaign, uh, Podemos' main um, uh, pitch was um, 
you need to vote for us. We need to be in the government because we are the only ones who can keep the socialists to the left of the line. The socialists are center, they're mainstream, and if nobody watches them, they'll easily slide back into a centrist position and they will renege on their progressive promises. However, if we are part of the government, if we cover with, with the socialists, then we will keep them honest in a way. Um, so therefore now also, and, and since the elections on Sunday, they said, we want to be in the government with the socialists. We want to form a real progressive uh, government in Spain to continue the progressive agenda we initiated last summer when Pedro Sanchez became prime minister and the socialist leader became prime minister through a vote of no confidence. And uh, an agenda that so far has been bogged down um, a couple times with Podemos' support the socialists did manage to pass a, a couple of important pieces of progressive legislation, including prominently um, uh, hiking up um, minimum wage in Spain. Um, that was a major victory. So the Podemos is looking forward to doing more of those kinds of things and to uh, help the socialists keep their electoral promises. The socialists are um, careful. They know they won the elections. They can bask in their victory. They know other elections are coming up in less than a month. So they are very careful not to make any moves that might alienate any part of their base. Um, so my prediction is that things will not actually be clear in terms of who is going to govern with whom until after May 26th when those other elections occur. All right. And uh, so let's go to the party that won. Um, but so um, in the victory speech, Pedro Sanchez uh, said the following. The Socialist Party has won the elections. We have made it happen. The Socialist Party has won the general election. And with that, the future has won and the past has lost. Because they are also watching us and listening to us outside Spain, particularly in Europe, we will form a pro-European government to strengthen and not debilitate Europe. Growing anti-EU sentiments in Europe, uh, Sebastian, um, what does this victory for Sanchez actually mean and how is this going to be now played out as far as the EU elections that are coming up? Um, I, I think of the different countries in Western Europe, anti-EU sentiment in Spain is among the lowest. Um, even um, parties on the right, like the Partido Popular, would not dream of, um, of, of really being Eurosceptical. That new radical right party, Vox, is very Eurosceptical. It got 10% of the vote. Um, but I think Spain's attitude towards Europe will not so fundamentally change. Um, the Socialist Party, like other social democratic or left parties in Europe, uh, does believe that the European should um, move to the left in terms of its economic policy, in terms of its thinking about social justice. Um, but I don't see any uh, major move um, from Spain toward the European Union. Um, we'll see what happens in the European elections. The key interest, point of interest for European elections, which, are, like I said, are in less than a month, is to what extent the trends that we saw happen at the national level in Spain on Sunday will continue. And the same is true for those regional and municipal elections. So the question is whether the Partido Popular, the main center-right party, will continue its decline, whether the new radical right party box will continue its, its ascent, and whether the socialists will continue their, um, their, um, their growth as well. That's the, that's the big question. Now, I thank you so much for joining us. Um, Sebastian Faber, professor of Hispanic studies at Oberlin College. He has just filed a, a story in The Nation about the election. So if you want to know more, go there. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.